Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure, here's a word about gasoline. If habit has you buying a gas that stresses one feature at the expense of others, shift to Chevron Supreme, the gasoline that's a correct balance of all eight high performance qualities. Quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, economy mileage, full power, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, and area blending. Try a tank full in your car of the gas with all eight. Fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Transcribed. And now, tonight's story, The Forgotten Murder, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. George Valentine, Esquire. My dear sir, I would deem it a great favor if you came for tea this afternoon at 3.30. I've been led to believe that you're the kind of man who would interest himself, first by a stipend, of course, in a problem such as mine. A murder which is not even considered as such. A murder which has long since been forgotten by everyone except yours very truly, Miss Felicity Graham. Mm, that's quite a letter. Equal parts of gentility and murder. I had a maiden aunt once who used to write letters that sounded like this, even if she was only asking the milkman to leave an extra bottle of cream. Here, let me see. Hmm, 45 Barrington Terrace. I know that neighborhood. Ancestral brownstones, with every room like a set out of arsenic and old lace. And every closet with a family skeleton, I know what you mean. Well, Brixie, I don't know about you, but I find myself rather impatient to have tea with anyone named Felicity. Any more tea for anyone? No, no, no thanks. No. Okay. Please excuse us, Paul. I'd like to speak to Miss Brooks and Mr. Valentine in private. Well, I thought you trusted me completely, Felicity, with everything. Please, Paul, you've been so sweet and patient all these years. Bear with me a little longer. But I don't think I... Oh, whatever you say, whatever you wish. My best friend, my only faithful suitor. Uh, your letter referred to a murder, Miss Graham. Yes. A murder which took place some 15 years ago. Until it's solved, I'm afraid I can't find any peace and happiness in my own life. Miss Graham, I think you'd better give Mr. Valentine all the facts from the beginning. Well, there was only one person who was close to me in the whole world. My cousin, Laura. We became orphans about the same time, and for years we were inseparable. And then she got married. And the scoundrel murdered her. And he's off somewhere... Grinning about it right now. Well, Miss Graham, if what you say is true, this sounds like a case for the police. Oh, the police. They consider me their personal cross to bear. They've been listening to my story for the past 15 years. The kinder ones simply say I'm pitched in the head. But if they feel there's nothing can be done, I, I don't know how much help I can give you. But I tell you, Laura was murdered. I refuse to believe that she and her husband entered into a suicide pact. It's... Ridiculous. A suicide pact, but I thought her husband was the murderer. If he's dead, too... Well, then... according to the police files, Laura and her husband, James Cartwright, committed suicide together. Drove their car off a lonely pier into the ocean. Oh, how awful. Their bodies were never found, on account of the tides. The only things that were found along the shore were one of Laura's shoes and her handbag. Was there a suicide note? Yes. It was found on Laura's night table. It said that she and Cartwright ran through all the money her parents had left her. They couldn't stand the prospect of just grubbing along. Uh-huh. Well, frankly, Miss Graham, I don't see how I fit into all this. Yeah. Look. There, on the financial page, it's yesterday's journal. 
Well, seen the place of Juan Palos, South American millionaire. Now, this is supposed to be Juan Palos, executive vice president of the Los Altos Gold Mine. He's here in the States for a director's meeting. Well, what about it, Miss Graham? I believe this man to be James Cartwright. You do? I met Laura's husband only once in my life, and that was quite enough. But I still say this could be Cartwright. Oh, no, isn't that taking a lot for granted, Miss Scream? It's been 15 years. So many men look alike. It was the name Los Altos that caught my attention. You see, Mr. Valentine, all during those few months they were married, Cartwright somehow arranged to send most of Laura's money out of the country to a town named Los Altos in South America. Some legal hocus-pocus with a shyster lawyer. How do you know all this? Well, I checked with a private detective. That's where the trail ended 15 years ago. As I get it, you feel James Cartwright married your cousin for her money. Then somehow, very skillfully, he stripped her of it. Oh, it was all very neat. Laura's signature was on every withdrawal, no doubt about that. And then you feel he killed her on what was supposed to be a suicide pact. Cartwright loved himself too much to commit suicide. He was too handsome, too arrogant. And he knew they didn't run out of money. He just had it planted where he could pick it up. Well, I I just can't go up to this Mr. Palos and ask him to bear his life to me. I know. And that's why I'm willing to pay you. I, I don't even have a picture of Cartwright. And there isn't a set of his fingerprints anywhere. He saw to that. Well, then, I don't I just see... want you to meet this Mr. Palos. See if he doesn't make the one little slip that'll prove I'm right about it. What do you mean? If this man is James Cartwright... He won't be able to resist anything that has to do with cards. Cards? Not only was he a gambler, but he prided himself on the tricks he could do with cards. All sorts of sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. Charming fellow to play cards with. Oh, I know if you go about it right, Mr. Valentine. You'll be able to make him give himself away. Appeal to the card sharp in him, huh? Well, we could give it a try. I must be sure. For this one last time. I can't find any peace in my heart. Can't pick up my own life unless I'm sure I... I haven't failed, Laura. I loved her very much. Of course, King Cartwright was a beast. He made life a nightmare for Laura. Deliberately, cruelly. How do you mean? He got a perverse pleasure out of hurting her. She was a high-strung, sensitive girl. She was afraid of the dark, for instance. When we were little girls... If we were left in the dark, she'd run out of the room, screaming. Cartwright would pull cute little tricks, like putting all the lights out. All sorts of things like that. Well, Miss Graham, it's a long shot. But if it'll make you feel any better, I'll see what I can do. much stock in all this, Angel. But if it will put her mind at rest, it's surely worth a try. Yeah, I guess so. Mr. Valentine, wait. Hmm? Oh, Paul Henridge, isn't it? Yes. I want you to stop checking into this business with Mr. Polos. Well, now, I was under the impression Miss Graham wanted that to be a private matter. I was eavesdropping. Not ashamed to admit it. Well, you certainly should be. Here. Here, Valentine, take this check. Oh, that's a pretty check. What am I supposed to do to earn it? Tell Felicity that Paulus isn't Cartwright. Well, now, look, he probably isn't, friend, but at least I'm going to try and make sure. Valentine, I want to marry Felicity. If she's convinced Laura and her husband did commit suicide, I think she'll finally say yes to me. I don't want to take even the smallest chance of Paulus being Cartwright. I understand how you feel, Henrich, but I do have an obligation to my client. You'll be a sorry man, Valentine, if you don't listen to me. I guess it's just a chance I'll have to take. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Johnson. She's been bothering you before, year after year. Uh, and the answer's still suicide, huh? No doubt about the handwriting on the suicide note. Okay, thanks a lot. George, the cablegram from that detective agency in Buenos Aires is here. Oh, good. Read it. The Palaces are respectable members of South American society. Senor Palace struck it rich at the Los Altos gold mine about 15 years ago. 
Married a lady from the States. Struck it rich about 15 years ago. Uh-huh. Oh, but it is such a shame. We are friends of Senor and Senora Palos. And now we miss them, eh? That's right, sir. They checked out this morning. Darling, give the nice young man ten dollars for being so helpful and telling us where the palace has went. But, madam, I didn't. I... Uh, women, eh, my young friend? Yes, women. They went up to the mountaintop ski lodge to rest up from doing nothing. Take a card, Brooks. Stop with that accent. All right, all right. Take a card, anyway. No, not again. Again. It's bad enough I have to do all the driving. But I have to do a little practicing on card tricks. Yeah, I know. Go on, go on. Go, go, go. Take a card. Okay. Okay. Three of diamonds. Close. Queen of spades. Uh, well, it's still a few miles to the ski lodge. I'll probably learn. Mr. and Mrs. Palace are at the table by the window. Thanks, waiter. Here you are. Buy yourself an annuity. <laughs> Thank you, sir. George, people are looking. Well, I gotta get into the role of Georgie Valentine, boy life of the party. Come on. Okay, Georgie. Well, well, honey, look at these two people sitting here by themselves. I bet they're as lonely as we are. I beg your pardon? I bet they'd like company, too. Really? Well, just a minute, my dear. Let's see what the gentleman wants. Well, when me and the wife here walked in, we said right off, I bet you these two people are just like us. Hate to eat alone. That's just what my husband said. How interesting. So we decided to come over and rescue you. Sit down, Claire. Oh, yeah, I want you to meet my wife, Mr. uh, Palos. uh, Juan Palos and Mrs. Palos. Hello. Oh, yeah. Valentine is the name. I travel in women's dresses. You, you, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> always get a salesman. I sell women's dresses, yeah. What's your line? Gold. Just gold? Gold. How nice for you. Juan, it's, it's really getting quite late. Oh, we have done, Doris. Yeah, Mr. Palace, I'm glad to meet another businessman who knows how to take things easy, how to relax. I bet anything you have a hobby, too. Oh, uh, yes. Skiing, of course. Mountain climbing. Oh, yeah, well, Fine. But I have a hobby I carry around with me. Makes me the life of the party wherever I go. I'm sure you don't need a hobby like to do that, Mr. Valentine. You're right, dearie. Yeah, but a hobby sure helps. Here, you see these cards? Go on now, pick a card. Well, no. No, go ahead, go ahead. Go on, go on, go on. All right. All right. Don't show me now. No. Eh, five of hearts. I'm afraid not. King of clubs. Oh, uh, but looky here, I, I take the whole deck of cards, and by flipping them up in the air like that, I uh, shuffle the whole deck. Oops. Oh, Georgie, they all fell. Uh, here, let me. Oh, oh, sure. Go ahead, Mr. Palace. If you want to show me how it should be done. I? Show you? <laughs> oh, senor, when it comes to things like this, I am, uh, I say, all thumbs. I would be no help at all. Oh. I merely wanted to help you pick up the cards. Poor Georgie and his card tricks. I don't know about you, Juan, but I've had enough of this. I'm going upstairs. Very well, Doris. It's been very nice meeting you, Mr. Valentine. It's too bad about your trick. <laughs> so sorry I couldn't help you to make it come out right. Oh, that's okay. You know, perhaps you tried too hard. That's a common failing with so many amateurs. Good night. Not even a little nibble, senor. Yeah, and I was certainly bad enough. Well, he's either the wrong man or he's very clever. Oh, it isn't a question of brains, Brooksy. I counted on instinct. If he were James Cartwright, demon card trickster, I was sure he couldn't resist showing me how the trick should have been done. Well, what now? Oh, I don't know. Hey, wait, Brooksy. Suppose I tell Palace who I am and what I'm here for. Oh, fine. He'll fess up just like that. Well, it isn't as silly as it sounds. It may turn into a very neat little trap. But if he is Cartwright, that'll give him all the warning he needs. You know, Brooksy, they haven't invented a trap yet that'll work without bait. And I'm sure of one thing. I'll make a better piece of cheese than I am a card sharp. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. 
Maybe you've noticed when you drive into a standard station or independent Chevron gas station that your car saver had a brand new tire set up in front of the station or in the window. It's the safer, longer mileage Atlas tire. Atlas tires have wide, flat treads, treads that put more rubber on the road and give you better traction. They're thick treads with good, deep grooves and hundreds of tough, anti-skid edges. And mighty important is the written warranty that you get when you buy an Atlas tire. Twelve months protection against tire damage from any road hazard. A warranty that's honored by more than 38,000 Atlas dealers from coast to coast and in Canada. You can buy Atlas tires on convenient budget terms, charge them if you have a Chevron National Credit Card, and get a liberal trade-in on your present tires, too. An inspection will show whether or not your present tires are safe. Drive in soon and ask your car saver to give you all the facts on the many safety features of the Atlas tire. Then you'll know why he's proud to put such a tire out front in his station. And you'll know why Atlas tires are out front with motorists all over the West. Remember, the men to see for safe, sure Atlas tires are the car savers at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. by a determined little spinster lady, Miss Felicity Graham, to try and solve a murder mystery more than 15 years old. Your specific assignment is to prove to your own satisfaction whether a South American millionaire, Juan Palos, is or is not James Cartwright. Yes, the same James Cartwright who presumably died in a suicide pact with Felicity's cousin, Laura. Up to now, you've gotten nowhere. So if your name is George Valentine, you decide on the most direct approach possible. You're going to walk right up and tell Senor Palos your suspicions. Before we go in to see the palaces, George, you've got to tell me what you want with my compact. I just wanted to make a nice, noticeable bulge in the pocket of my jacket. You could tell me why. Uh-uh, I'm good time. Yeah? Oh, ho, ho, Senor Valentine, the, the cartridge man. Yeah, well, that's what I came over to explain, Mr. Palace. That is, if we may come in. Well, of course, of course. Has your husband been practicing, Mr. Valentine? Well, he's been cooking up something. Juan, who's at the door? I... Oh. Juan, darling, we must be dressing for dinner, and I'm sure that these Oh, people... uh, please, Mrs. Paulus, this won't take long. The truth is, I'm not a traveling salesman. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss Brooks. And the reason I'm up here at the lodge is to find out if you're a murderer, Mr. Paulus. What? Juan, call the manager at once. This man is a... A raving lunatic. Think fast, almighty brother of Dick Tracy. Well, the suspected murderer, Mr. Pallas, was supposed to have practically had an obsession about car tricks. So if he had been you, he would have given himself away when I did that car trick so badly. Must we listen to any more of this fantastic story? No, 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 but I find this rather intriguing, my dear. Just why did you suspect me, Mr. Valentine? The trail of the murderer led to South America. To Los Altos, to be exact. It was lost there. Oh, my dear fellow, there are more than a thousand people in Los Altos. Fully more than half of them work for my company, as a matter of fact. Well, I came to apologize. It was a bad hunch, poorly played. You should apologize. Forcing yourself on us in the dining room, lying to us. Yeah, I know. Especially when it was also unnecessary. I'm glad to see I've been exonerated. Now, that's not exactly what I meant. What is that? I mean, I now have a concrete way to solve this case. In my pocket, I have the lovely heart-shaped compact that was found in the dead lady's handbag. Really? Yeah, strange how everybody overlooked such a glaring piece of evidence at the time. But sometimes it happens. What in the world are you talking about? Well, as soon as I get back to town, I'm going to have an expert check on this compact. And I think I can prove it was murder. Oh, well, good luck, Valentine. And uh, be sure to let me know about this solution when you find it. I shall be most interested. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. George, I haven't the slightest idea hey, wait, what you're trying to... Hey, hey, you... That man! That's Paul Henry! Yeah, you! Henry, wait! Uh, don't you know it's impolite not to answer when somebody's talking to you? Let go of me, Valentine. Not Let until go. you answer a couple of questions. I warned you not to interfere. Uh, well, Mr. Henry, welcome to Mountaintop Lodge. So you've been eavesdropping again, eh, friend? Yes, and again, I don't apologize for it. I am... Get out. Oh. I'll kill you if you don't stop meddling. It's not fair, Buster. You didn't say put him up and fight like a man. I'm not going to let Felicity find out. I don't care if this one Palos did kill me. Okay, if you must play rough... 
Come on, Angel, let's get out of here. Now, go on up to your room, Brooksy, and get dolled up for dinner. But if Paulus is Cartwright, he'll move heaven and earth to get this silly compact. Well, it's just a long shot, but at least I'll feel we did what we could for Miss Graham. Now, go on, scoot, scoot. Well, okay, darling, I'll see you later. Be careful. Yeah, I'll keep my back to the wall and the lights on. If there are any fireworks, I want to see who sets them off. Ah, might as well shake. I didn't I didn't get a chance to put the light on. In the wall. It must have fallen right on my head. Please, darling, sit still. And I don't have an enemy in the world, huh? Maybe it was a dear friend who did this. All I know is it was a he. I heard his footsteps. And the way he hit me, I know it was. Oh, sure, I see the compact is gone. And we found out what we wanted. He is Cartwright. Yeah, a long-lost Cartwright. Why aren't you going to tell the police so they can really dig into Senor Palace's past? Yeah, yeah. But first, we're going down to the dining room and intrude on the palace's privacy once more. But why? Furthermore, we're going to make believe this little accident up here never happened. I'm certainly not going to break bread with a man who nearly broke your head. I know it doesn't make much sense, Angel, but that's what we have to do. Hearty appetite, folks. Ah. Well, Mr. Valentine and Miss Brooks. I thought you said you were leaving. Well, Mrs. Pallas, I was out for a little while, but I'm back again, big as life. Yes, Mr. Hendricks, you get at that table. Uh huh, everybody's here. May we join you folks? Really, don't you think? Thank you, you Mrs. Pallas. We will sit down. Uh, oh. Please do. And uh, since this is our last meeting, I insist on trying one more card trick. Oh, waiter, you'll be ready to help out, won't you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Good, sir. good. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind applause. And thank you very much, gentlemen of the orchestra. Your timing was superb. Juan, Juan, people are staring at us. Well, no, Mr. Valentine, I really must agree with thank my you, wife. Thank you, Juan. It's, it's about time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to show you a very spectacular card trick, which will have special meaning to one particular person in here. Since it depends entirely on the element of surprise... I will now ask that the room be plunged into total darkness. Okay, waiter. That's fine. <laughs> Doris! Doris, wait! Everything is all right, what? Doris! What made her do it, George? That was horrible! Come on, Brooksy. Let's get up to the Palace of Sweet. Doris! Doris, please, please let me in, darling. There is nothing to be frightened about. Well, perhaps she'd let me come well, in and help her. What are you two doing here? Haven't you done enough? I know how you feel, but if Why you... Why did you have to do that? Well, that's what I must explain. I don't care about your explanation. I don't want to hear them. Just... Please, please help me. We must get in there. Ah. Help me, Valentine. Okay. Doris! Doris! Not here. Doris, where are you? Please, Doris! Oh, Doris! No, she is gone. The back door is open and she's gone. All I can find is this note. Read it, man. Lie I've been living is over. And in a way, I am glad. I don't know how you guessed my secret, Valentine. But well, this to you, Valentine, what does this mean? You'd better finish it. I, I am Laura Cartwright and I killed my husband 15 years ago. What is that? George. He drove me to it and I planned it so carefully. Sending the money out of the country, planting the evidence, and then going to Los Altos to live. I found real happiness there with you, Juan. But this would have been the end for us anyway. So goodbye. Doris? Doris killed a man? The man you were looking for? No, this is all so mixed up. I, I, know, I don't know, I know. Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine, may I see you a minute, please? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Excuse me. 
I... Mrs. Palazzo, it's terrible. I saw her. In the dining room, I know. Uh, no, no, outside. She was trying to drive away in her husband's car in such a hurry. Yeah, yeah. She lost control and went over the side of the mountain. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. Well, the manager wanted to know if you... if you would break the news to Mr. Palos. Yeah, I, I guess so. And then there's still something to be done to help the living. <laughs> To ensure the best performance of modern automobile engines, our scientists subjected hundreds of motor oils to grueling laboratory and road tests. Even atomic energy was used. Atomically treated piston rings in test cars showed engine wear as it occurred. The result was heavy-duty RPM, a motor oil that, compared to premium-type oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. So if you're not already using this oil, switch over now to heavy-duty RPM and get top protection for your car. Ask for heavy-duty RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Well, darling, what did Lieutenant Johnson say? You know, he's a nice guy, Brooksy. If there's a way of keeping the truth about Laura from Felicity, Graham, he'll find it. Oh, yes, it's much better that way. She can now find some happiness with Paul Henry. <laughs> I should be sore at Paul for slugging me and taking away that worthless compact. But I guess people in love deserve some consideration. George, how did you ever suspect Mrs. Palace at all? We were so definitely looking for a man. Well, because it was a man who knocked me out. Huh? Yeah, not a woman. And only the murderer knew for sure that the compact didn't mean anything. So why do anything about getting it from me? That's only a small thing. But I started to think. Looking at it objectively, it was much easier for Doris than her husband to send that money out of the country. And it was her shoe and handbag that were found. And the note about the suicide pact, that was in her handwriting, remember? And she was an American who came to Los Altos and married Paula some 15 years ago. Uh Uh-huh. Still, I had to make sure... And I remembered what Felicity said about Doris's fear of the dark. Like I always said, George, you don't miss anything. Uh Uh-huh. Say, what time is it, anyway? Um, I wonder. Of course, that great big round object over our head might help. Huh? No police headquarters is complete without it. (laughs) Well, at least you can't say the clock was right under my nose. No, darling. It was just over your head. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Lorene Tuttle was heard as Felicity, Larry Dobkin as Palos, Lee Patrick as Mrs. Palos, Bill Boucher as Paul, and Victor Rodman as the waiter. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. You can do something about cancer. Strike back at this dread disease by joining the cancer crusade of the American Cancer Society. Help support its vital scientific research program, education program, and service to the cancer patient. Cancer strikes one in five. Give generously to the American Cancer Society. Mail your contribution today to Cancer Care of Postmaster. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.